Okay, so in the previous video, I said um, finding aggregate demand is a bit delicate than um, simply summing up the demand curves. And um, this, this might be confuse some of you. Uh, for that reason, I decided to um, uh, make a, a short explanation what I really meant by that and how, I, how we actually find the aggregate demand curve and why it is okay for this course um, to just simply sum up the demand curves. Uh, because as you will see, it's uh, a bit more complicated. And then once you find the demand curve, every aggregate demand curve, it may no longer be linear. And that's the problem because nonlinear demand curve uh, and non-differentiable demand curve uh, it's it's difficult to uh, solve the optimization profit optimization profit maximization problem. All right, so for that reason, um, it's okay to just add up the demand curves again for this uh, intermediate microeconomics course. So I instead of uh, the previous example, I decided to use these two uh, inverse demand curves because um, I just wanted to work something with integer. Uh, you know, values rather than uh, non-integer. So here is the demand curve for uh, group one, uh, inverse demand curve for group one, and inverse demand curve for group two. So first of all, in order to find the aggregate demand, we have to find the demand curves. Um, so from the inverse demand curve, we just take the inverse of it, meaning send a Q1 term to the left-hand side, and 20 remains at the same place, uh, minus P1. All right, so the parenthesis Q1 is irrelevant because it means, oh, this is my function. Uh, the name of this function is P1, and it's, it's, it's a function that depends on the variable Q1. So, all right, so this parenthesis Q1 is just the characteristics, in a sense, of my function. So it's not, uh, it's not important when I do the, uh, this, this inversion. So we always leave the uh, term on the left-hand side alone. So divide both sides by 4. Uh, I have Q1 equals uh, 20 uh, divided by 4, which is 5. All right. So it's 5 minus P1 over 4. Okay, so that I want it to be... Um, integer. Good. So this is the demand curve for group one and then the demand curve for group two. I just do the same inversion. All right. So 40 minus P2. Therefore, the demand curve for group two is 40 divided by two. So it's 20 minus P2 over two. Okay. So if you remember, we said, oh, the total demand, capital Q, which is Q1 plus Q2. So it's simply uh, 20 plus 5, 25, uh, minus, um, remember, when we find demand, demand is a function of price, P. So the, uh, and the uniform pricing, uh, meaning both groups are going to pay the same price. So instead of P1 and P2, we are basically using P. So therefore, this is P over 4 plus P over 2, all right? Uh, I mean, minus P over 4, minus P over three, uh, uh, 2, so that means minus um, 2P plus P, 3P over 4, all right? So that's the demand curve. Let me rewrite it. Q equals 25 minus 3P divided by 4. Uh, this, I, we said this is the aggregate demand curve. Again, for this course, that's perfectly fine. However, the mathematically correct Aggregate demand is the following. So aggregate demand, all right, is equal to um, the, uh, so aggregate demand is a function of P, obviously, all right. It's summation of two functions, but it's the summation of one function, which is max of zero comma um, five minus P one over four, all right, plus max of zero comma 20 minus p um i'm sorry there's no p1 p2 it's just p p over two all right so that's the 
aggregate demand. Yes, we add them up, but the thing is the demand will never be negative. All right, here we just ignore that. The demand is either zero, right? I mean, no one demands the good, or it's positive. So for that reason, for values of P where this term or this term is negative, well, then we actually use zero instead, not this term or that term, all right? So that means um, our demand curve is going to look a bit more complicated. So let me find that demand curve, all right, for the sake of argument. So what we can see here, this term is going to be negative, all right, less than or equal to zero, right, whenever... Um, so here, look at it. So, so 5 minus P over 4 is less than or equal to 0 means P over 4 greater than or equal to 5, meaning 20 is less than or equal to P. So whenever price is greater than 20, this term will become negative. So for all those prices, actually, we add this term with 0, not with something minus. All right, so here... This term is less than or equal to zero means P is greater than or equal to 40. All right. So that therefore I have, well, obviously this is, this, this threshold is higher than this. It means the maximum price the monopolist can charge is 40. All right. So, uh, so I will have a graph like quantity versus price. So the maximum price will be 40, all right? Well, however, between, whenever the prices are between uh, 20 and 40, this term, all right? So again, whenever price is higher than 20 and lower than 40, this term is actually the maximum of these two things is zero because this term will be negative. So therefore, uh, when, P is greater than or equal to 20, but less than or equal to 40, the aggregate demand Q is equal to just this term. All right. And what is this term? Because P is less than 40, this term is positive, meaning higher than zero. So the max of these two is the this one, which is positive. So the uh, um, demand is going to be 20 minus P over 2. All right. However, when P is less than um, 20 or equal to, doesn't matter, uh, but obviously price should never be less than zero. So whenever the price is in this range, well, clearly this term is still positive, right? So because this term is negative only if P is higher than 40, but P is less than 20. So this term is positive. So the max of zero and this, so, the, so this term is higher than zero. That means this term is equal to 20 minus P over 2. And this term, uh, 5 minus P over 4 is greater than 0. So therefore, the max of 0 and that term is uh, 5 minus P over 4 itself. So we the aggregate demand is basically these two, which is 25. Uh, where is it? Okay, there you go. So the total aggregate demand is 25 minus P over 4 minus uh, P over 2, which is 3P over 4. Exactly this, all right? So this part and this part are the same, but this simple summation ignores this part, all right? Okay, so when you want to draw this, it's going to look something like this. So let me draw this demand curve. So it's quantity versus price. So when quantity zero, price is going to be 100 divided by 3, all right? And when uh, P zero, quantity will be 25. So this is what the demand curve will look like. However, the mathematically correct aggregate demand curve is going to be this uh, piecewise function, uh, which means whenever uh, P is... Uh, between 20 and 40, so P is 20 somewhere here, let's say, all right, 20 here, uh, 40 here. So whenever the price is in, in this range, I have this function, 20 minus P over 2. So how do I draw that? So P, I set P0, quantity is 20, 
I just need that and then just the intercepts and then whenever q0 p is equal to 40 so this is my function all right but obviously below the 20 for prices below 20 uh, those are not actual demands so therefore dot 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 all right and then whenever i have a price less than 20 in this range uh, the actual quantity demand is this one, 25 minus 3p over 4. So let me again find the intercepts. p0 means quantity 25. So let's say this is 25. And when p, uh, q0, p is equal to 100 divided by 3, which is around 33, I guess. So somewhere here, I don't know. So 100 divided by 3. So that means, oops, this way. Yep, but this function is only valid for prices less than 20. So in this part, it's dot, 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 dot. So that means, oh, by the way, these two functions will certainly intersect at this point where P equals 20, all right? Uh, because of the way we constructed it. You can check and verify, nevertheless. So our actual demand curve is not linear. It's piecewise linear, all right? Something like this. Uh, this is the mathematically correct aggregate demand curve. Obviously, we don't do that. Instead, we just do this and because it's simpler. And finding the monopolist profit, solving the monopolist profit optimization problem with this demand is definitely more challenging than, I mean, it's not impossible, it's still possible, but more challenging than this. And the reason is this payoff function is piecewise. Um, linear and it, it is continuous but it's not differentiable so remember the differentiability of a function it has a kink point and at this kink point the derivative of the function is not well defined and so um, the first order conditions uh, are not going to guarantee the, 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 the this, uh, optimality so we have to do a bit of more uh, calculations so to keep things simpler in this course we just add the demand curves uh, and that's fine. All right, I hope this explanation helped you uh, clarify the confusion I caused in my previous video. All right.